now crops in the south of England, there was once impenetrable prehistoric forest. But the forest grew more sparsely on the high chalk ridges. They were better places to travel, cultivate and defend. And thus, 5,000 years ago, a route was first defined that's now called the Ridgeway. We're following the ancient road by motorcycle, where for 40 odd miles, it runs from Berkshire to the Vale of Pusey near Marlborough. Our journey began at Streetly on the Thames, where once Ridgeway travellers would have forded the waters. The next day, west, with fresh companions and a change of horsepower. Taking us as far as the Iron Age fortress of Barbary Castle. And that's where the final part of the journey begins. Today it's all magic and mystery waiting to be discovered by our two modern ridge riders, television presenter Claire Smith and musician extraordinaire Midge Yore. We'll be riding a combination of bikes, modern trial bikes like this, and beautiful old bikes from the 50s and 60s, a golden age of British motorcycle. Midge borrows a 1962 BSA Gold Flash. He's a keen biker, but slightly worried. Get all my toes touch the ground. The green road expert and guide is Alan Kind. He borrows this magnificent 1958 matchless. Our youngest companion is Claire Smith, a motorcyclist from the age of five and as former Miss UK, a seasoned traveller. I went to America, so Very nice. it was great. It was a really good experience for me. Places, and also I went to South Africa for a month for Miss World, and it's somewhere I wouldn't have gone. Do you know this area at all before? Today? I don't. I'm afraid I've never actually been here before. Um, I'll certainly come again. I think it's a lovely area. And so to the route for the day. We're on hack pen. We're going to drop over, and we're heading now down into the Vale of Pusey, which is our ultimate destination. Overton down, past the old coach road, down to Avebury, Silvery Hill, and down to cross the Great West Road, which is now the A4. Which is more or less where it ends. More or less where it ends, at least as far as we're going to go on this occasion. The Ridgeway is a green road, legally a highway, but it's a peaceful and popular place for all. So the code of motoring conduct calls for slow speed, small groups and staying away altogether at weekends and holidays. Also in the wet when the wheels can damage the surface. Utmost care and courtesy. You never know who you might run into. It isn't. It can't be. It is. Shaw Taylor, as I live and breathe. <laughs> oh, you do both. At <laughs> once. How are you? I'm extremely well, lovely to see you all again. Stupid. All the old mob at work. What are you doing up here? Ah, well, I live not very far away, just over in Marlborough. And this is a perfect dog-walking area, you see. Now oh, the huge hounds that we just the saw. The huge hounds, yes, those massive Tibetans. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice stretch, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, the Ridgeway is superb. I'm, I mean, look at that view. What more could you yeah. ask than that? It's like being up in a hot air balloon, really. You a history buff? Uh, not terribly, no. My wife is. We're just over to see a church. Oh, you'll have to ask her what it's called, but uh, she's a great visitor of churches, not in a religious sense, but in a historical sense. And so every Wednesday we shove off and um, find a nice church, and then I find a nice pub, and the whole thing works out for us. Well. <laughs> <It's> absolutely <laughs> perfect. Go on, do, do the routine for us. Go on. For the, go on. That one. For the boys, yeah. I'm not sure I can still do it. You mean, uh, if you're walking on the ridgeway, don't forget. Keep peeled. <laughs> the Ridgeway history is there to be seen and to be imagined. Imagine the great Saxon army storming across the lowlands in the year 556 to attack the Romano-British. A bloody hand-to-hand -hand battle and the Saxons emerge victorious to establish the Kingdom of Wessex. And 3,000 years earlier than that, this tiny child skeleton was laid to rest on the Ridgeway. Avery Museum keeps her safe now. Not far away is Windmill Hill perhaps the oldest inhabited site on the ridge, a gathering place for prehistoric tribes. Mankind in so many generations has passed along here in so many different ways. We 
motor on in search of ancient history. When crossing a country lane, we light upon masterpieces apparently as old as time itself. And that's just the owners. The bikes are two-stroke Scots from the 1920s. Peter Berenger and his friends ride them everywhere. Well, that one went from Land's End to John O'Groats in just five days. We raised 20,000 for the Hart Foundation. And There's much talk of old motorcycles, but it also turns out that Mr. Berenger's been farming hereabouts for 50 odd years. He's seen changes during the war, working 24 hours a day to feed the nation. Now it's empty fields to stop Europe growing too much. It does concern me a little that this ground is in what they call set aside, but in actual fact, I would much sooner see crops grown on farmland because in the depression, a lot of this land went to rough grass, uh, thorn bushes, etc., etc., and a lot of the owners were prepared to give the land probably to somebody for two years to, to farm it, ranch it, whatever you'd like to call it, rent free, mm. just for something to be done on it. Mm. I just wanted to interrupt, we've, we've got to move on along the ridge road, but I wanted to ask one last question related to the bikes, really. Is it absolutely necessary to have um, a handlebar moustache like you've got to ride one of these bikes? <laughs> no, it's not in a necessity, as you can see my friend over there. <laughs> Does he have one in his pocket? <laughs> no. Oh, no, this is real. <laughs> Oh, well, we're a bit lost. Thanks very well, much. I hope you have a very enjoyable day. Right to meet you. On two wheels. Right again. Right. Right. Lovely have a marvellous day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if these spots will start. Like the people who've dwelt here, this land has evolved so much since prehistory. Dense forest, blasted heath, small enclosed fields. Today, often wide open spaces once again. So many things, so many different inhabitants, so many legends. Now the Celts who lived in these ear parts two and a half thousand years ago believed all the South Downs were hollow and that hobgoblins and fairies and loads of little folk lived in them. It's probably just a way to get the kids off the bed at bedtime. But there is another legend of a lone shepherd up here with his flock who suddenly heard ghostly music being played on a fairy fiddle. He followed the music apparently into the hillside and was never seen again. To this very day, the road leading up from the valley is called Fiddler's Hill. Is that the wind I can hear whistling? Or the sound of ghostly music? the Ridgeway crosses this humble track. It's hard to believe, but this was once the main London road to Bristol. 18th century gentry, maybe even the king himself would have passed this way. Samuel Pepys took the stagecoach along it. He wrote, it was prodigious to see how full the downs are of great stones, so thick as to cover the ground. Would you believe it? 50 million years ago, this was actually a big and hot desert. And uh, the sand in this desert, mixed with silica and made these massive stones which um, are, are called uh, sarsen stones uh, which is a kind of Saxon name for difficult and I presume it's because they were bloody difficult to get out the ground and see, these are the stones that uh, seemingly uh, were dug out and uh, taken 20 miles from here to go and build like Stonehenge and stuff. I presume that what's left here as you can see are just little lumps of stone all the good ones were taken away and this is just the kind of the rejects the debris 
A few big ones up on the top, though. I suppose they're the ones that I missed. No, didn't just didn't bother with. I wonder why they stopped doing all this kind of stuff. I don't know. They probably uh, what, found you... prefabricated buildings. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the stones here. We have a field. We could build our own stone hinge. <laughs> okay, well then. You get that one. I'll get some more. Right, okay. <laughs> but 4,000 years ago, people did move stones like this by hand, and much bigger ones. And then to add to Stonehenge, brought yet bigger blue stones all the way from Wales. It's incredible. And I, I will say it's a very kind of mystical place, and you do get a, a sense of that when you, when you come down this area, the whole West Country is. So you're big into history anyway? Well, uh, uh, more so recently than in school. I mean, in school it was one of those things that was drummed into you, which you, yeah. you either loved or hated, and uh, like most things I was taught, I hated them all. Um, it's not until later in life that you actually start to kind of discover them yourself and have a, have a, a growing interest in it. It's, it makes a difference when you go to a place, doesn't it? And you, you can sort of, you, you think of the people then that, that, that were at these places. Well, you get, a, you, get a, you get a feeling, that, you get this feeling that, I don't know, past lives, I don't know, waffling here, but you do, you feel as though you've been there. I feel as though, I, I feel more at home in, in the Highlands of Scotland than I ever did in Glasgow, where I'm from. Mm. And I don't know why, because I, I never spent an awful lot of time there as a kid. I must have been a, you know, a crofter or something in my previous lives. What a, about sing, a singing crofter. A singing crofter. Singing crofter. <laughs> no one else could hear you with the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way they like to. <laughs> From the wilderness of Overton Down, we're making our way back now into Avery itself, where the Wiltshire mysteries deepen even further. Europe's oldest road takes us to Europe's largest a most peculiar circle of stones and then on to our final destination marked in music for us by the Albion Band. Can you hear the picking an ancient hand Carving a horse on the chalky off the Ridgeway. Briefly, we've had to desert Europe's oldest road for the more mundane A4 to reach our next destination. But what an extraordinary sight there is to see. It's Silbury Hill. It's man-made, stands 130 feet high and represents, they say, three million man-hours of sheer hard labour. You know, 4,000 years ago, this was the highest site in prehistoric Europe. It's a, it's a great mystery, though, because no-one knows why it's there or, or what its purpose is. Well, I've made quite a few attempts at kind of excavating the thing. And, they haven't and found anything. Under, underneath all this, because it's actually a mound of the earth. It's, it's, it's it looks all like solidly here. packed chalk. And it's, 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 it's a like stepped a thing. It looks like a pyramid underneath. Yeah. Weird. Archaeologists know work started late one Neolithic summer because deep in Silbury's foundations they found remains of flying ants. They know it was built and improved in three phases over maybe several centuries, yet they still don't know why. Some say it was a tomb for the legendary King Sel, buried here with his horse and golden armour, but no one's found him. There are other more fanciful ideas. Apparently, this flat surface on the top of the hill, some people think that it's a... It's a kind of landing, landing spot. site for UFOs. I have my own theory as to what it is. I, I reckon somebody lived over here and someone lived over there. They didn't like years them ago very much. And didn't like them. And no. in order to spite the people over there, they thought they could build a great big hill and spoil <laughs> so the view. Yeah. Fine. Okay. <laughs> a landing site? A memorial? Just something to impress the Neolithic neighbours? Silbury Hill is simply an enigma. Maybe it was just handy for the A4. 
What is known is that 1,000 years earlier, building had already taken place almost in its shadow. This was a sacred place, a burial chamber, the West Kennet Long Barrow. A barrow from the old English word Bayorg, a tomb. The local expert on the matter is Gillian Swanton. Come inside, I'll show you what was going on and what we think was going on in here. This is a member of a group of barrows called the Seven Cotswold Barrows, and they're characterised by being built of stone with this, um, these chambers at the eastern end, eastern inverted commas. Some of them faced so directly east and some so southeast, some northeast. Do you know what sort of people were buried in here? Well, we don't know quite how you got the pink ticket to get into a barrow, because obviously <laughs> there were a very, very small uh, proportion of the population. That actually, there are only about 46 people in this, and it was in use for anything up to about 1,500 years. The chiefs. Oh, yeah. and so, and, th and there, are, there are very strong uh, possibilities that these people were related. There are some, some similarities, like the three, three of them had had spina bifida, and that could be a oh, genetic yeah. connection. So uh, maybe a royal, an extended royal lineage over possibly. about 1,500 years? Yes, possibly. Um, and there are children, wow. elderly people, young adults, um, mature adults, all buried in here. And also they tended to move things around. A body would be left in here perhaps and um, the flesh would obviously rot off. And then to make room for the next one, they used to stack things up. Skulls in one corner and long bones in another. Oh, <laughs> we did. Sorry, Claire. Oh. <laughs> and then they would have actually taken some of the some of their ancestors' remains out for uh, ceremonies elsewhere because this is not an isolated site. It's part of a whole range of sites which were in use at the same time. The bones of the dead were finally taken by archaeologists into a museum long ago, but you may still find here the occasional resident bodies. And I believe somebody came up here. Um, last year, the year before, and found some people camping in here, which must have been a fairly chilly experience. Actually. People sleep in here overnight? You yes. wouldn't get me in here. <laughs> 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 I think mean, I would, actually. I'm used Chil to it. Chilly on many levels. <laughs> 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 I think I'd better sleep. Yeah, next. <laughs> Everybody out. Everybody out. <laughs> Within a mile or so is the village of Avebury, or Avebury as it was known once. A hamlet of houses, but one of the most remarkable archaeological sites in Britain. The most intriguing legacy is the Great Stone Circle. These huge sarsen stones were first dragged into position around 2,400 years before Christ, several hundred years even before Stonehenge. It was a Herculean task. The stones weigh up to 60 tons each. They're very sculptural, aren't they? The way this thing sticks up like that, and then with the little knobs and then the light flow. Mike Pitts is the archaeologist to talk to. His professional interest brought him to oh, live here. I've seen stone formations before. I've seen yeah. the stone formations in Calamese. I've obviously seen Stonehenge with her. But this is enormous. You don't see anything like this, have you? Nothing. I mean, no. this, this, this it's, uh, totally encircles the village. Uh, it, it's incredible. And it's so big, you can't... I mean, it's over there, but you can't see it because yeah. it's behind the houses. Well, what's this? I mean, because, I, I, I mean, the stone the, the, the formations I've seen before, this is something else. This is like a, a massive trench going all the way around. Well, again, this, this, this the, goes the, right round. And there's the ditch bank that they made with the chalk out of the ditch. So they dug it all out and then formed dug it all out. a big high bank in the background. Yeah, too. and then just inside the ditch they put this big ring of stones. Why? You tell me. I have no idea. <laughs> it's, it's religious, it's special. For the people who built it, for the people who saw it, who lived through it, who died when it was new, it must have been special to them. It has to have had some religious meaning to them. Something that was more than every day. But beyond that, who knows? The stones are treasured now, but for thousands of years they were neglected, even despised. From the Middle Ages, many of them were razed to the ground. Some of these stones, I mean, at the turn of the century, a lot of these stones were being broken up to build houses. And if that's the case, how come we've got so many stones left? Or did they just not break these ones up? Yeah, well, they were using not just the stones in the circle here, but there are hundreds of these slabs of sarsen all over the downs, and yeah. they were using those for building. It was a veritable little industry. And so, of course, they came into a group, broke them up had no special interest in them. But what happened, they didn't know, and nobody knew until a few decades ago, uh -huh. that in the Middle Ages they'd been burying a lot of these stones for reasons that we can only guess at, but yeah. presumably had something to do with the fear of the stones. There was something pagan about them, Christians didn't like them, were frightened of them. Right. They were pushing these stones over, digging huge pits in the ground, burying them, covering it up, gone. Okay, it's right? pretending they weren't Just yeah, pretending they weren't there, getting rid of them. And when the archaeologists came along, 
so found these pits in the ground. They found a lot of these stones still there. So it's a kind of like, it's like a hidden circle. They were yeah. here, but they were buried. That's right. They knew the circle was here because there were records of it before the stones were broken up. Right. But they didn't realise there were so many megaliths left. And so the archaeologists stood them up again. It gave the archaeologists an opportunity to see just how tough the job was. It took 14 men four days with levers and ropes just to slip a small stone into its foundations. No wonder that Avery has developed an air of mystery. People have come to credit the village and its stones with mystical powers. And even the village shop does a nice line in divining rods. <laughs> You're performing some well, strange no, ritual. Well, no, that's about it. Well, someone over there asked where you were, and they said you were over by the stone. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, so, so to buy these to find out exactly which stone you were at. Well, you found this, I suppose. It, they're then. crossing over as well. What does this yeah. mean? It means uh, we're struck well, and it's <laughs> this way. What are we... Uh... Oh, we're going to be rich. Let's go. <laughs> Get that, Luke. 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 Look! Is that this one? Designer. 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 Is it? Uh, the, the, this will yeah. never make it to the film. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting dangerous. An avenue of sarsen stones leads us out of Avery to rejoin the Ridgeway. The avenue links the stone circle with yet another ceremonial site, the sanctuary. But our final destination is just a little further on. At the summit, there's an ancient burial chamber known as Adam's Grave and watched over by yet another white horse. Perhaps it's the most spectacular resting place a Neolithic chap could imagine. A final climb and we finish our journey high up on Walker's Hill. Well, this is the Vale of Pusey, which mm. is at the end, basically, of our journey uh, along the ridgeway. Great view. I think thousands of years, travellers have come, got to this park, stood here and looked out. And no. Of <laughs> yeah, it's all summed up for us here, really, isn't it? In one, wonderful. One big go. Absolutely wonderful. I, I've been amazed along the trip about the history of the place. It's 2,000 years older than the pyramids, some of these places. Absolutely frightening. It's all on our own doorstep as well. And everywhere you look, there's still more history. Yeah. There's sites that have never even been dug yet. Well, you're saying, we're saying this is the end of the village where it's not really, is it? Well, no, because it goes down to the south coast a lot further yet. And there's other roads, there's the Harrow Way and the Racecourse Road and the Ox Grove. Endless exploration. Mm -hmm. This part of the Ridgeway is unique, the way it's remained as a green road through the centuries. There's nothing else quite like it. But there are other roads that are well worth following. Oh, with all those other roads to explore, I think we're talking about second series here. Oh! <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and then into Europe. And then no, no stopping. Europe, America. <laughs> the world. Australia. It's the world. Yeah. <laughs> you realise you can go right around Australia on a dirt road. <laughs> <laughs>